Hi, and welcome to this session on infrastructure complete development with GitOps and Scaffold. My name is Max Anderson, and I'm a DevOps engineer with the Neo4j Re developer relations team. Uh, if you're watching this on DockerCon Live, uh, there will be a Q&A later uh, in the chat where, where I can answer some of your questions. And if you're watching this at a later point or your questions has still not been answered, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or drop me an email or find me in the Neo4j community Discord. Um, I'm going to jump straight into the demo. And what we're going to be looking at today is uh, an application that um, uh, looks like this. It's a really simple three-tier architecture with um, a web app, uh, an API, and a, um, and a database. Uh, you can jump around different actors, different movies, and see what they've acted in, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can find the code for this on GitHub. I've added some uh, extra stuff to make it work for this demo, but <clears throat> um, I'll try to make that available for you as well. Uh, so to be able to do this, we're gonna uh, we're gonna use a program called Compose to actually convert our Docker Compose file to. Uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, artifacts, and we're gonna use something called customize to uh, manage our infrastructure, and then we're gonna use uh, uh, another program called Scaffold to be able to do this kind of infrastructure development continuously. Uh, so we, as soon as it detects this a change, uh, it will rebuild our images and it will push them up to our registry and deploy them to our development environment. And uh, that way we can keep track of that all our changes are actually matching. And when we feel we're confident with that, we can tag those images and release them for production. But we don't just want to push our changes to production. So instead, uh, we're going to use another GitOps tool that's called Flux. And Flux will uh, deploy some resources to our cluster and it will uh, watch our repository for changes. And if it detects any changes, it will deploy those uh, straight uh, to Kubernetes. So that way we can have a review process. Uh, you can uh, suggest changes by um, pull requests and so on and so forth. And it will make uh, the infrastructure development process uh, more complete as, as such. All right, let's have a look at our code. Um, all right, so here I am now in, in a project. I've just added a git ignore, some environmental variables. It contains my GitHub user and a personal access token. I will not be showing those on screen and um, an empty source folder. Uh, I've added those to the git uh, ignore as well. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not using a git module or something like that or a sub module in, in this uh, instance just for, for simplicity's sake. If you want to do that, fine, go ahead to do that. But um, this is how I'm going to do it. Uh, so in the source folder, we're going to create a symbolic link. We're going to make a symbolic link to the repository that I've downloaded with the code. Uh, so now we can have a look at this. We have this API here we're going to use with a Docker file that will build our runtime for us. Uh, we have uh, the same for our web application. That's a static application that then gets served. Uh, you might want to have a multi-stage uh, Docker file here or something like that, but that's something that you could add in after the fact. And we also have a Docker Compose file that we're going to be generating our um, the beginning of our infrastructure from. So we might uh, we have some environmental variables here, and this 
uh, setup is perfect for for application development because they can get an infrastructure up and running to actually develop their code. But when we want to move an application like this to a production environment, uh, we might want to do some other things as well. We might uh, want to put in some scaling groups. We might want to put in some logging, some um, uh, some load balancing, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this talk is going to be about how you can put up a process for doing this and working with um, uh, with your infrastructure at, in the, at the same time, uh, making sure that your applications are compatible with the infrastructure as you as you go along. Um, so now let's back up to our uh, product uh, uh, project folder here, and we're gonna do a git init here. Um, and then we're gonna go on and make a repository on GitHub as well. Uh, Git create, and we're gonna call this uh, demo ICD uh, repo. Repository, all right. Uh, so we want to make this a private one. We want to link it to our current folder and it will add a, a remote a remote to our repository here as well. So we can push upstream as well. Uh, that's perfect. So now that we have this, uh, let's start by making some folders. So uh, for customize, uh, we will need a base folder to put our infrastructure in. Uh, we will also be making um, overlays. Uh, and in overlays, we want to make one for our development environment. And we want to make one for our production environment as well. Uh, <clears throat> Right, so now we have our folder structure right here, uh, but we still need to populate this with something, right? So this is where the compose script comes in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this compose convert and point it towards this compose file. And then we're gonna populate it into our base folder. Right, I have to be one step up. And that creates a lot of uh, Kubernetes manifests for us. And it has our environmental variables and it has uh, our image name and our container port and stuff like that. And it also created some services here. Uh, if you're running a database in production, you might not want to run that as a replica set, but rather as a stateful set or something like that. Uh, but for our purposes, this is going to work fine. Um, but let's go into the base and actually make this uh, customized uh, project. So in order to do that, uh, we will uh, do customize, create, and auto detect. Uh, it will see that we've uh, added some resources here and it will make a customized file with uh, the resources that we want to deploy from this layer, right? Uh, but in order to make changes to this, uh, we also want our um, development um, layer to have those changes. Uh, so we're going to run this command again, but this time it's going to end up as an empty file, right? Uh, so in order to change that, we can see if we, if we were to build this out right now, uh, we wouldn't get anything. So uh, we have something called basis here, and we will point that two layers up to our base directory. And just looking at this, if we build this now, uh, we get all of our manifests uh, compiled uh, here. And But for example, we might want a namespace to, to for our, for our uh, development environment. So let's call it dev movies, right? 
And we also might want to make some changes uh, to this development environment as well. So uh, to do this, uh, I'm just going to put in uh, these right here. Uh, so it says patches strategic merge. So that just tells customize how we want it to apply our patches to our previous layers. And it points towards this movie API development YAML. So let's create that. Uh, movies API development .yaml. All right. So for customize to actually recognize uh, this file, it will uh, need to have some information from, uh, from the current development. So, oops. Uh, so let's just grab this. And let's add the metadata name movies API. All right, so this is kind of the minimal patch that you can make. This won't actually apply anything to our infrastructure, but uh, everything else that we write here, for example, spec template, uh, spec containers, uh, we'll get, uh, will get um, merged with our base layer. So we're going to put in movies API here, and we're going to put in an image. And here instead, we're going to point it to my public uh, uh, GitHub, uh, Git, uh, Docker Hub uh, instance, where we can um, uh, pull it from our Kubernetes cluster or whatever else where want to pull our images from. So let's call it movies API demo. All right. And we need to do this for our web, um, our web deployment as well. So let's rename it to web. There we go. And let's uh, exchange all of this to web, web, and web. All right, let's make sure we've saved everything here. And if we now build uh, this development environment again, we'll see that we have some issues. And uh, if I, oh, look, I went too fast. So it's supposed to say deployment. And this one is supposed to say deployment as well. All right, let's try that again. All right, now we can see that it added our namespace. We can see that it added our uh, our image definition uh, on top of our base layer. Uh, and I feel pretty content with this. Uh, we could now just uh, pipe this this build into our cube control command, but uh, we also want to be able to do other things, right? So let's back up to the project directory, and for this we're going to use scaffold. Uh, so scaffold is one of those GitOps tools that you can use, and we're going to do init skip build, and it's going to recognize that we have a customized project, and it's going to make an initial suggestion for our file. And we're going to accept that. And we're going to look here, and it just says that here's the path that we want us to deploy when you're running this. So what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, add a build step to this. So we're going to have artifacts, and we're going to have an image, and we're going to have Max Anderson slash movies. API demo, and we're going to have a context. So this context is pointed towards the Docker file. So uh, Scaffold is smart for uh, smart enough to to look at that Docker file and see which files are affected by that Docker file, and if it's in scope, it will regenerate that image for us. Uh, so we're going to go source Neo4j movies template. Uh, demo and uh, flask 
Flask API. And we're going to do the same for our web application. Uh, so you could add in uh, even more here if you wanted to. Uh, but we're going to be content with that. And we have the deploy command. And this should make us able to run scaffold dev. Right, so I've already built these images, so it won't uh, rebuild those images for us. Um, <clears throat> but if it had detected any changes, it would build those and tag those and then push them up. And now we can see it's already starting to deploy uh, our, our layers to, uh, to uh, Kubernetes. And we can see that here in um, Kubernetes Lens, uh, which is a great program for those of you working a lot with Kubernetes. Uh, we can see that it uh, is currently processing here. Um, we have some pods already up and running. Uh, we have our services here. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. All right. But we could do now is basically we could use a proxy to actually access our services. Uh, use that uh, either through Lens here uh, by just uh, pressing on one of these ports, or we could use the kube uh, CTL uh, command and uh, proxy our way in. But instead, we're gonna use uh, we're gonna use scaffold for this instead. Um, so I've already prepared some uh, ports here to put in. Um, so now we added some configuration here and we can see that our services are up and running. If I now save this configuration, scaffold is gonna detect the change and it's gonna rerun this pipeline. And now uh, we should be able to access these on our local, uh, on our local host. So we go localhost 8080. All right, here we can see our application now running in the Kubernetes cluster instead of um, instead of our um, local machine. That's great, but uh, let's say that we uh, now are wanted to make a change, right? So we want to go into our API, for example, and we could add a print statement here. Uh, let's just say, hello, uh, GitOps. And we save that. A scaffold will detect the change, rebuild the image, push it up to our registry, and deploy it to our namespace. All right, so you can see how this can be used to actually make sure that your application is matching your uh, development, and then you could just iterate until you feel that, all right, I have a working version of uh, my application, I have a working version of my infrastructure, and then you could deploy that infrastructure um, uh, when you feel like it. Oh, I see that we got W too much here. Um, all right, so instead now, Let's not focus on the development environment. Uh, now let's focus on the on the production environment instead. So if you look here, we don't have uh, a layer for our production environment uh, yet. Uh, so what we will have to do is that we will have to uh, create one of these. Uh, let's just quit out of this. and it cleans up our project for us. So we don't actually have to have our infrastructure running. That's good if you're running a quite expensive infrastructure, right? Um, so let's go into overlays and production and uh, do the auto detect again, and we get our customization file. And here we might want to 
uh, for example, add a load balancer to our web application, right? <clears throat> so let's do that as well. So let's add a file here, uh, movies, web, uh, service.yaml. And I'm just gonna copy this in. And it's the same goes here. We wanna match the, the name of uh, the resource, uh, which kind of resource we're, we're using. And we will just overwrite the, uh, the spec type uh, or the service type. Right, so we're gonna save that. Um, and now we want to, oops. Uh, now we want to have a look at our repository. So we have a couple of things here uh, that might need uh, to be added to our repository, right? So we can check our docket config. All right, so we have this repository here, demo ICD repository. And we can then easily uh, do um, a git add and git commit. Uh, there we go. And we can push this upstream, right? So our code now lives on GitHub, right? That's great, that's great. But uh, we said that we wanted uh, Flux to actually pull this new configuration layer uh, into our production environment. And in order to do that, uh, we're gonna run a Flux check just to see that everything is in, in place. All right, we have everything in place. Then let's, um, let's bootstrap this uh, this repository uh, to, all right, so we're gonna have to bootstrap our uh, GitHub repository. And uh, to do that, um, we're gonna enter in um, our GitHub user, and we also have the GitHub token in our environment. And we're gonna point it to a repository on the master branch and point it towards our production layer. and. Let's just run this. So if you don't have all of the uh, Flux uh, components in your cluster, don't worry. Uh, this bootstrap process is gonna install them for you. Um, and once they have that, it's gonna uh, issue a, a public key with the help of your personal access token to be able to access this uh, repository remotely from your cluster. And when this uh, when this has been done, it's gonna pull down the, the the source code, and it's gonna try to apply those manifests in our production um, in our production folder. All right, so let's see here. All right, so we forgot to actually add these patches to our um, customization folder. Uh, let's start to by uh, giving it a namespace, prod movies. And we're gonna do basis, and we're gonna add the, um, development as a base and uh, you might want to go straight from the base for a production environment but in this case we're going to go from the development part and then we have the uh, the merge here as well and we're going to add that in here and we're going to go service and it's the web service, right? Great. So now we have a functioning customization file. What we can do 
uh, is we can go into overlays, production, and see the customize can actually build this. <clears throat> All right, great. We have our namespace. And um, yeah. So uh, now let's push this up to GitHub. Uh, but first, uh, when we run that bootstrap process, uh, Flux is going to add a couple of files to our repository. Uh, we can pull those down and merge them in. And then we will be able to push our changes. And we could run Flux uh, reconcile to do this, but let's just run this part again. Uh, this command is impotent, so it will uh, give us the same result even if we were run it multiple times. And there we go. We successfully reconciled our production. And we can have a look over here as well uh, at our uh, deployments. And we see that we have some uh, uh, deployments here in our, um, in our um, environment. And we can also see that we have uh, this external IP for our load balancer on this service. Right, so I think we're gonna wrap things up there. And you can see how this uh, process of developing uh, infrastructure can be uh, a good way of actually being able to make changes to your application at the same time as your infrastructure to make sure that everything is is compatible before you push your things into production. Uh, you can also see how we can separate our development environment from our production environment. And we can start to actually use a developer's workflow to build our infrastructure. Um, as I said before, uh, I'll be trying to answer questions in the Q&A. And uh, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or uh, join the Neo4j community Discord. All right. Thank you very much.